right, guys, let's get started. I think we've still got a few stragglers to, to come in. Welcome, everybody, to the CloudStack European user group. I had to just check with Melanie that this is definitely the European user group today. It's not the German user group. This is the, yeah. This is Champions League CloudStack instead of Bundesliga CloudStack. Okay. Uh, for those of you who haven't been to one of these before, just sort of what this group is about. This group's been going for six years uh, since CloudStack first came to fore as an open, for, open source project. And it's a, it's a collaborative group where a bunch of people who work with Apache CloudStack get together, we do some technical talks, we have a few beers together, we share ideas, we share problems, all sorts of things, but all focusing around Apache CloudStack. Related tech, so we often have guys from storage vendors, network vendors come, come along. We have lots of case studies, uh, people just sort of sharing ideas and problems. We try and meet quarterly. That doesn't always sit exactly because sometimes we fit in with other user groups and things. And we meet in all sorts of places, London, Paris, where else have we been? Sofia, here we are in Berlin, Dresden, yeah, we have Prague. Prague, thank you. Any others? Well, I'd change it myself. Uh, these are sort of organized by volunteers, right? Um, okay, so we all work at different companies, but a lot of people put a lot of effort into getting the speakers to come along and getting videos done and getting foods uh, uh, laid on. So the company I work with, uh, Shape Blue, have put a lot of effort into, into this. Itelligence and, and Heinlein uh, support from here in Berlin. Been a collaboration to, to get an event like this off the ground. So a round of applause, first of all, for, for the sponsors. Uh, I'm going to ask Andre, I'm from Shape Blue and I'm not going to say anything about Shape Blue. Andre's just going to say a couple of words about intelligence, I believe. I don't want to talk about intelligence now because I guess Andre is giving a talk then and he will say some words about the company. I will say something about me. No, uh, just kidding. Just for your reference, uh, see the, uh, 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 the, uh, the details. And I'm quite interested in running. So if somebody wants to go uh, have a run with me tonight or tomorrow morning, just join me. But important, we are here at CloudSec and I'm really happy and excited that so many people are here. So we even had to shift the location because we had so many um, people which were interested, which is really good. And um, I was starting engaging with CloudSec, I guess, 2014, 2015, so where we had really a small program. So I, I see Sebastian who was trying to figure some things out and we were really impressed. And this led to the fact that we had the first European um, uh, CloudSec user group here in Berlin in 2016. Still, it was uh, under the name Bit Group, so because um, now it's intelligence, because intelligence bought uh, or acquired uh, Bit Group in 2017, so now we are under the name of uh, intelligence, but the origin was in Bit Group. And as you see it here, it was 16th of June 2016. Um, the agenda as such. It's the same template, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Jais looked mu mu much younger than today. So Have we got some different talks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paul was still in. <laughs> Yeah, so we had to stress for the last four years now. But um, this was the starting point. I'm really happy uh, to uh, uh, invite you all here and looking forward for the day for discussions. And this is all about networking, discussing problems, um, issues, having ideas. Just come together and I'm enjoying the beer in the evening. And maybe one thing before I hand over to Heinlein, maybe yeah, Steve with short hair, but exactly in 2016 he had birthday, not exactly on this day, but the next day. So we, uh, at midnight we celebrated his birthday and also you have not birthday today, but we can do the same today, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Andre. Hi, good afternoon everybody. So uh, I'm Per Heinlein. I'm happy that you're here. I'm very happy that there are so many people here. Oh, for the camera. Hi. Um, I don't want to talk too much about Heinlein because I don't want to steal your time. Um, I'm very sad that you're so much because we created so nice rooms in our own academy last year. So we've been we, we were very happy if the CloudSec user group meeting would be one of the first meetings in our own conference rooms, but you're too many people. <laughs> so we decided to move to the hotel. We cannot handle 50 people at the same time. So now we are here. And um, yeah, but first of all, I want to 
say thank you very much to Melanie, which is a little bit hidden there on the door, uh, because she organized everything here with the help of Robert and Dennis uh, from my team here. I did nothing in the last two weeks, so it's not my part to stand here in front. It should be Melanie, and uh, thank you for your work for everybody here in the room. It's not my part. Hello, thank you very much. Um, it actually was Maria and I who did all the planning. <laughs> was Maria? Maria? Maria is out of the <laughs> <laughs> so you join us? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Maria, fit in. <laughs> and um, I came to contact with Project at the same user group meeting in 2016, and since then, um, enjoyed them very much and enjoyed the exchange of, of ideas and knowledge and and the beer drinking and the events in the evening. And so we did not only think about the technical topics but also what to do in the evening. And uh, in last autumn we had some nice eating together after after the meetup and we had the idea to reserve some space in some restaurant and anybody who doesn't have to go home early maybe would like to join us then. Um, there is a bar over here in the hotel, so we can go there to um, drink some beer, then change over to some restaurant. And those who still are not too tired uh, could go for some tour. With us in the afternoon. A secret good, tour. We know a very good tour guide. Um, <laughs> because. I'm going to take over. Yeah. Because last time I had the honor to give you a walk in Berlin, because I've been born in Berlin some years ago and I'm very proud of the city and tonight uh, Melanie organized a nice tour for you this evening with also a guy from our company but first of all I have to ask you if you know what this one what this is it's that tower, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, some people some people believe that it's a TV tower in Berlin but it isn't it's a big antenna some people may say, yes, a TV tower is a big antenna, that is what it is for. But it's much more than an antenna, it's just the middle of a spaceship. I don't know whether you heard about the history of Berlin, that many, many years ago a big spaceship crashed over Berlin. A big spaceship that has, I don't know how many kilometers in the, in the middle. And this is the middle of the spaceship. You know a spaceship is a ring. Sea base. Yes, now we are going to see a, a ring, so you have some gravity in it. In the middle of the ring is the TV tower of Berlin, or at least what you believe it is a TV tower. So we are below the floor, below the ground of Berlin, we have a big spaceship. We don't know everybody, uh, we don't know everything from the spaceship today. We found some stuff um, in different parts of Berlin when they grabbed the hole and build it some house and sometimes they find a piece of the spaceship but uh, tonight you will have a tour in uh, 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 yeah in a public accessible part of the spaceship with Jan from our team he's called so called T he has just a single code character name. code name yes and he's a uh, some something like a commander of the spaceship from today and um, I totally recommend to join the group this afternoon or tonight uh, and maybe you will also have access to the core to the inner circle of the sea base which is not always public available but I think Melanie you did it tonight with Jan and you will take the tour and the group with you so I can't be here tonight but I think you will have a lot of fun and now it's up to you again okay it's up to me again so and one important thing is um, we were, we weren't exactly sure how many people will like to attend the evening program and I have to fix rough numbers with the restaurant. After the lunch break, which is, uh, which maybe you will explain. Yeah, around about uh, yeah. 14.30 we are attempting to go and have, it's not lunch, it's mm -hmm. more in, another break time with some cakes and coffees again in meeting room one. Um, and when we join again, maybe those of you who want to join us, just show us by hand. We will come up again and ask you who wants to come and join us at the restaurant. And please just raise your hand if you do want to. We count and then we call the restaurant and tell them how many people to expect. We'd oh. love to see as many people Yeah, as well. it would be great. It was much fun in autumn and I can imagine we will be having lots of fun now in winter. Thank you for organizing it all, guys. Thank you. <laughs> So if you have if you haven't been to Sea Base before, I highly recommend it. It's a it's a fantastic experience. Uh, unfortunately, we've we've got.
we've got to do some sort of uh, work related, some cloud stack related stuff for the afternoon before we go out and have a load of fun. But we've got some really, really good, interesting talks uh, uh, to, to listen to. I'm going to do the usual thing of these groups. I'll just go through some of the stuff that's going on with Apache Cloud Stack at the moment, like a news roundup, uh, and talk about the upcoming 4.14 release. Uh, Andre is a, where is Andre? I haven't met Andre yet. Is he here? Here, he is. here he is. Hey, Andre. Andre is going to talk about uh, importing VMware infrastructures into Cloud Stack, and I'm guessing around some of the new functionality that's around with, yeah, with it's, it's about the ingestion feature. Ingestion feature. <laughs> Fantastic. So I've deliberately not talked about that in the roundup of what's coming out in the new release because you're going to do a whole talk on it. Uh, we then should be having a break. What we may do, you, you know, we're not a massive group here. If we get slightly ahead of schedule, we'll stop for a 10 minute, you know, quick coffee break at some stage or something, or if it gets too hot in the room, we can be a bit flexible around that sort of stuff. Uh, Robert is here. Where is Robert? I can't see there's a light on me. Robert's at the back uh, talking about using Cloud Stack with Terraform. Uh, Paul is then talking about Primate, which is a project, which again is another new thing in 4.14 that I'm not going to talk about. Uh, it's a new UI for Apache Cloud Stack, and it's been a major effort in the community over the last six, seven months, uh, and it's gonna be there in, in the upcoming 4.14 release. So Paul's gonna talk, us about the history, talk to us about the history of that project and the, how the UI sits together and everything. And then finally, Sven, where is Sven? This is like being on a proper theatre stage with, with this light on me. Sven, you are talking today about OpenShift. Yeah, with, with with cloud stack. So as you'll see, in, in terms of what we we we, we say with this uh, with this group, it's not all around cloud stack. I mean, the common interest in this room is generally Apache cloud stack, but we've got a lot of things about sort of related techs uh, that sit around the edge. And as I think you already know, we're going to go on and have a few drinks and go to some interesting places. Unless, shall we? Shall I tell you all about that again? <laughs> Okay, so this group, uh, we call this the Cloud Stack European User Group. Uh, there are lots of these sort of groups. There's a, a sort of set of guys here in Germany who have the Cloud Stack Germany User Group. There's lots in different parts of the US, in India. These are all sort of informal things that somebody, in this case with the, with the European one, it was me, got it sort of going in, in, initially. Somebody sort of put together and you build a bit of a community and we, we, we end up having meetings regularly. But don't think this is a, this is not an official sort of Cloud Stack thing. This is not the official whole community. This is just a sort of subset of, of that. Uh, we also, uh, once a year get together and have a CloudStack conference. We call it the CloudStack Collaboration Conference, which is a much bigger affair. So uh, this year, I'll, I'll tell you more details uh, in a second, it's going to be, uh, I think, in September. Uh, we're in Las Vegas last September. So we have two tracks. We have talks of the days. We have a hackathon. It's a much bigger affair. And we co-locate it with ApacheCon uh, as, a, as an umbrella organization. That's, that's me a few years ago there. <laughs> but I don't get invited to do that anymore. But. So just in terms of how this all sort of sits together, Apache Cloud Stack uh, is developed under the umbrella of the Apache Software Foundation as a, as a governance model. So we all sit, as people who work on it as a project, sit in the middle as the community. This user group and lots of other user groups sort of sit around the edge. And then we have the, the, the collaboration conference, which is yet another thing which sort of sits around the edge. But the core work around Cloud Stack in terms of writing code and documentation and testing and building releases and things goes on in the development community, in the mailing lists, uh, in the Slack channels associated with, with the actual project itself. Uh, a sort of show of hands, who here is an experienced Cloud Stack person because you're using it or you do something with it or you develop in it? I mean, I, I am. I'd spend my life doing it. No, I mean, as in you, you, it's something you regularly use. I know you, I know there's, put your hands right up so I can see. So that's probably about half of the room. Uh, who here has just played a little bit with Cloud Stack? So I'm guessing then by default, the rest of the room is to the next question. Who really hasn't done much with CloudStack, but you've just come along to find out what it's all about today? One person. <laughs> what question What question did I miss there? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Who's too embarrassed to put their hand up? <laughs> yeah, Melanie. And who came for the free lunch? <laughs> uh, a few people. All right, let me, who is new, who hasn't got any experience at CloudStack? Be, be honest. Okay. All right. So nearly everybody in the room has, has got experience. Okay. Well, it helps because I can sort of 
uh, d decide what I'm going to tell you about now, depending on how much experience. But we've got a pretty experienced group here. Uh, so I had expected this to be a pretty inexperienced group, so I was going to do a Cloud Stack 101 quickly in five minutes, but I'm going to go through that very quickly. Maybe make it interactive and ask a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, as by way of reminder, Cloud Stack is a uh, I mean, that's a, a, a marketing uh, written uh, set, sentence up there, but it's a, a multi-tenant, open source, purpose-built cloud orchestration, IaaS, infrastructure as a service platform. Okay, It's an open source project governed by the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, some people describe it as the other open stack, uh, but it's, it's the one that's been around for a little bit longer, that I think will continue to be around for a little bit longer, that never quite got the attention that the open stack did. Uh, in terms of what it does, uh, I'll flick through the animations there. It's pretty much, uh, think of Amazon EC2, CloudStack is a piece of orchestration tooling which, which lets you create your own Amazon EC2 style environment. Okay, so you take some networking storage compute, you stick some hypervisor hosts on top, CloudStack will then orchestrate all of that, present an API, uh, present its, its own CLI that we call CloudMonkey and its own user interface. Uh, obviously then, in terms of what people, depending on the use case, what people are actually doing with it, you often then bolt other things on top. So you might, we're going to hear a talk later about using Terraform to, for, for descriptive stuff on, on top of CloudStack to automate. If you're a public cloud provider using it, you're going to have some sort of e-commerce platform for selling instances and storage and that sort of thing. Uh, container as a service, uh, all sort of, you know, a CICD pipeline on top. It's just there to automate the infrastructure underneath. Uh, oops. We've got loads of animations and other things. So we've got lots of support for lots of different hypervisors. One of the lovely things about CloudStack is from from the from the top looking down through the API or, or the UI, you don't really know what hypervisor you're using. CloudStack will orchestrate VMware, KVM, whatever it is, whatever it is you want, and the end user just sees uh, sees an instance. They they don't need to know anything about the underlying hypervisor. Uh, it's got its own uh, virtual networking model, uh, very very scalable. I think the largest deployment ever got up to 35,000 physical hypervisor hosts being orchestrated by, by CloudStack. Uh, you've got three different interfaces, a REST API, a UI and a command line. There's a nice picture of the current user interface. A few bits about the, the, the uh, current API, and that's CloudMonkey, which is the, the CLI tool we've got for CloudStack. Uh, in terms of what's going on today, uh, three to four releases, just to give you an idea of what goes on in the project, three to four releases a year. That number is actually this year's dropped down a little bit because, so we, we've got two release cycles, we've got an LTS cycle and a, a standard cycle, but the standard cycle isn't getting as much, hasn't got as much cadence as it, as it used to have because more and more people are getting drawn to the LTS cycle because more work's going into that. So I think this year we will have had well, in the last 12 months, we will have had two major releases instead of the, the three to four. Uh, lots of people using CloudStack, and the two big use cases, you've either got people who are service providers who are doing some sort of public cloud offering and using CloudStack to drive that, or an organization that's using it for one of whatever reason in, in, internally who are not a service provider using it for some sort of private cloud. We see a lot of test dev environments being driven by CloudStack, as I say, sitting underneath a a, a, a CICD pipeline, all sorts of different different uh, use cases. As I say, we have a, an LTS release schedule, so we have two LTS releases roughly per year, uh, which are then supported for, for two years afterwards. And the community that builds CloudStack is a user-driven community. So what we don't have in CloudStack is big software vendors who are rushing to make billions out of this thing. The history of CloudStack is complicated, involving a number of big software vendors, but basically most people in the community today are from organizations running CloudStack, okay, or doing something with, with CloudStack, not trying to, to, to use it to, to change the world. Uh, in the project, we've got about 200 committers. Uh, the PMC, which is an Apache concept, like the management committee that sits over the top, is, is diverse from all sorts of different organizations. In the, again, show of hands in the room. Any committers in the room? I know there's committees in the room. Any PMC members in the room? Yeah. So one, two, three, six, six of the PMC are here today. And I think there's, how many are in the PMC? Anybody? About 40? 40. 40, something like that. All active. Yeah. 
last, just to give you an idea of metrics and sort of, sort of cadence, uh, last four weeks, 11th of June. <laughs> oh, I know what's happened. Yeah, okay. They are roughly the same as those figures. I've, my, on a slide later on, I've got that with uh, and the updated figures, but roughly the same. We've got actually a few more mailing lists. This was until yesterday, about 400 mailing list messages, roughly, I think it was 50 people contributing, more PRs, uh, and the package downloads were actually up a little bit from last time I gave this presentation, which you can see I've copied and pasted. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that sort of level is that's the sort of level of activity we we have in the project. And what I'm just trying to get over here is Cloud Stack. Apache Cloud Stack is uh, is not the most talked about open source project. It's not one that's at the forefront of a lot of people's minds, uh, especially now the conversations moved on and. Orchestrate, orchestrating physical infrastructure and virtual infrastructure has seen a little bit boring, uh, but it is still a very active project with a lot of people working on it. Uh, there are the use cases, which I told you about. I'll flick through these quickly. Okay, uh, here was some, just to give you some idea about adoption. Uh, we are an open source project. We're not a vendor, so we don't have a marketing department. We don't have somebody who pulls slides like this together. This is just based on our known user list. When people come and fill out a survey and say, hey, we use it, we're using your software in, in production. Uh, there's some cheating gone on a little bit. You know, the company I, I run, we have commercial relationships with certain, we sort of encourage these people to, to, to get their, their name out there. But there's a lot of organizations who are running Apache Cloud Stack for either a public cloud or a private cloud uh, use case. And the other thing is there's a lot of organizations who we know are running Cloud Stack, some very, very big. In fact, some of the world's largest organizations running Cloud Stack who just will not talk about it because they don't talk about what tech they, 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 they use full stop. So we've got some, uh, some really significant use, ongoing users of, of this technology. All right, I am going to flick through a few of these metrics and things. Did you mention the one that we didn't used to be able to talk about, but can now? Yep. We can. Yeah. That's a very good point. There is a there is a very large company based in America that happens to be named after a fruit that makes phones and uh, sells me a lot of music that we used to have to describe in a pub conversation just like that. But now we can say Apple are one of the world's largest cloud stack users. They never they never would talk about it. And then when Paul, this is Paul, who's the VP of cloud stack. Say hello, Paul. Uh, when Paul did his talk at the conference last year, he managed to get Apple to agree, and there you had to jump through all sorts of hoops to, to make that happen with their intellectual property people and their marketing people and everything. But they came along and, and told the story of how they're, they're, they're using CloudStack to underpin uh, a very significant bit of their, their infrastructure. In fact, that talk, Paul's talk from the conference last year is, is online. You can find it in the CloudStack YouTube channel and you'll see Anthony from Apple pop up and say hello and everybody, wow, this is really, really exciting. And there's a lot more organizations like that who just won't talk about it. Uh, so we've got lots of people downloading our, our packages. Uh, I will skip a little bit of this, excuse me, and jump forward to the news in terms of what's been going on. Uh, lots of work, development work. Uh, in September we released 4.13, which itself was a pretty big release, which has been a very successful release. Right now, and as I say, as in right now, about to code freeze any day is 4.14. Uh, again, it's a release that's got a lot of significant new, new features in it. It will have hundreds of minor improvements and bug fixes as well, but it's got some pretty big headline new features. Uh, I counted, and this was just by looking at stuff in JIRA, I counted roughly 140 uh, general Im improvements and, and new features, but that number isn't finalized yet until the, until the code's frozen. Um, some interesting new stuff around KVM. Uh, we have a rolling maintenance feature now, so CloudStack will orchestrate rolling maintenance of hosts underneath it. So if you need to update drivers or, or, or what have you, uh, CloudStack will do that for you automatically. That's only in KVM. At the, at, the, at the moment. So if you try and use that in CloudSat and you're not running KVM, it's not going to work for you. Uh, VR health checks, which is a feature which lets you get, lets the, the virtual router, the, the VR, show hands in the room. 
who knows what a virtual router is? Good, because based on the earlier survey, everybody should know what a, a virtual router is. Uh, so this is the idea that the, the virtual router is going to report into the management server periodically uh, a set of uh, checks, set of extensible checks, but by default you're, you're talking about things like can it connect to the outside world, what's its... Uh, what's its uh, uh, activity like what's his root disk uh, space available that sort of standard machine monitoring thing that's going to all report into cloud stack so we can then trigger alerts and see if we can see any potential problems coming with a virtual router vm ingestion uh, which is what andre is there is is talking about uh, that's the feature vm uh, vm ingestion is the ability to ingest bring in import virtual machines uh, specifically from a vSphere environment uh, We've got a number of new virtual router diagnostics tools, uh, so you can now uh, you can now do things like pinging directly from the virtual router, but from the management interface itself, so you don't have to log on to the virtual routers. And you can also download download config, uh, sorry, uh, log data directly from the the, the virtual router itself. Uh, we can now pass custom configuration into the hypervisor host when it's creating a VM. Uh, so if you've got uh, a specific piece of hardware or you want to do something crazy with the vir virtual machine and pass that into to whatever hypervisor you're using, you can, you can configure that as, a, as, a, as an administrator. So when people use the launch VM wizard, they're actually prompted for those pieces of configuration information. Uh, and then another couple of bits to, to do with bypassing secondary storage for, for templates. And then the other thing, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you're going to hear it a few times today. Yes, we now have a new user interface for Apache Cloud Set. Paul is talking about that specifically later, so I'm, I promise I'm not going to do any sort of reveal or, or anything. <laughs> That's been a massive project. Uh, project Primate was, was the name given to it. It's become effectively a sub-project of, of, of CloudStack. That's been a huge amount of effort over the last few months. Uh, this should all be shipping with 4.14, although Primate's a slightly weird thing because it actually probably end up having its own release cycle, but it will be available from, from 4.14. Uh, I've got a bit more detail on some of these headline things. I'm not going to go through these. In, I'll leave these slides in there when I put them on SlideShare so anybody can, can reference them if you want uh, because we haven't got much time. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, just my last bit, just talk about some upcoming events. Uh, next meeting of this group is on the 4th of June, is in London at Ticketmaster, who are a big cloud stack uh, user. Now, if any of you have been to their, their office, is, is really fantastic. It's worth visiting. It doesn't have an alien spacecraft in the middle of it, but it does have a nightclub in the middle of, of the office right. and a slide as, as well. Uh, so that should be good. Another one of these. Uh, there is also the store pool guys. Where is it? There? So they're there. Are organising uh, European Cloud Infrastructure Day. In May. Thank you. Not in June. In May. <laughs> in May, which I will correct before I put these on. Uh, on, on slide share. Uh, we did one of these last year, we went along and, uh, and, and, and spoke at a really good event, uh, a broader sort of subject base than, than, than just cloud stack, but, but worth getting over to if anybody uh, fancies it. We also have some slots for conference speakers, so if anybody wants to be a speaker, we'll be happy to welcome Stand up event so everybody can see who you are. Yeah. So if you want to go to S Sofia in May, not June, and go and talk about something, speak to Yvette in the alien spacecraft later. Uh, and the big one for this year is the CloudStack Collaboration Conference. Last year it was in Las Vegas. This year is in New Orleans uh, between the 28th and the 2nd of, of October. Uh, 28th of September, 2nd of October. Uh, that's a much bigger affair. So we've got two tracks of different talks that tends to get into a user track and a developer track. There's a hackathon. It's co-located with Apache cons. You've got all, lots of other projects there as well. Uh, and it's got its own website there. Uh, so watch that space if anybody's interested in going. Okay, last thing before we get onto the speakers proper. Uh, I always just ask for help at, at, at these events. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, CloudStack isn't <coughs> 
the broadest, the most well-known open source technology, despite all these people using it. So I always look to people who come along to these events, help if you can, right? And help get the word out. Uh, if you're new to the technology, make sure you join the user's mailing list and say hello and ask for help if, if you need it. If you're using CloudStack in your organization, please see if your organization will talk about it, will let you come and do a talk at something like this or at the conference or do a case study uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the, the PMC so we can get that on the CloudStat website. It's really valuable. You know, earlier we did show our hands, half the people in this room are using CloudStat in your organizations. If we can get more organizations to publicly come out and say they're using it and here's our interesting use case, it really helps the project. Uh, that's pretty much everything from me. Uh, so